All right, Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone that rule well and labor in this word and doctrine, and Shalom to the elect. So we're just going to try and hit the key points. Of, I've got quite a few tabs up. I'm not sure what I'm trying to extract out of them. I was just sort of browsing <laughs> while on plantation today. So I'll see what we can draw out of it, and I pray it's an edifying lesson through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. All right, so we've got a list of executive acts and actions by Mr. Joe Biden, who is now the United States President. So, the first one is for you, J you Jakes. Advancing racial equity and support for un underserved communities through the federal government. And that was, that was the first one, it says. So, this, his first priority is making sure you Jakes are in <laughs> under his thumb. Making sure he gets you on side. Make sure, you know, when you want to... Um, when you try, when you're trying to befriend someone when you're little or whatever, you might have had a falling out with a friend, and you might give them a sweet or something to try and bring them on side. That's exactly what he's doing, man. Okay, so you got that. You got ensuring a lawful and accurate enumeration and a, oh, an apportionment pursuant to the decennial census, census, and I think decennial is referring to the every ten years annual deck, meaning ten. That's what I believe, but look it up. You've got organizing and mobilizing the United States government to provide a unified and effective response to combat Crown 19 and to provide United States leadership on global health and security to keep Babylon in the forefront of pushing whatever agenda they're pushing. And of course, however it's set up from, well, the Lord ultimately, with the elites on the left hand, that's how he will take his orders. And you've got Mr. Joe Biden saying, um, before your tenure is over, you will m rule on that about the RFID microchip which is the mark of the beast you can look that up maybe we'll pull that in another video so preventing and uh, here we are preventing and combating discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation so if you think that you're actually a woman but you're a man that's fine and he's going to prevent and combat any discrimination that being people telling you no you're actually a man ethic commitments let's just scroll through there we are, protecting the federal workforce and requiring ma mask wearing, he's got 100 days of mask, 100 days of mask really pushing that. And a lot of them are about the crown, the crown pestilence, travel, even government, and the government is going to be, it's going to come through the military ultimately. Mark, we words. They got that, see I said that I got a lot of tabs man. Alright, so we'll touch on this, we'll touch on this because we'll go to this first. I don't know, you can't seem to drag these. I would have put it in this order, but here we are. Joe Biden's inaugural prayer service was the most LGBT inclusive in history, with blessings for trans and gay people. Do I even need to say anything to that? Apart from abomination. You've got the same thing here. As America moves away from the Trump administration, which sought to dismantle and or weaken critical LGBT plus federal policies, the Biden-Harris administration is already working to restore them. Now... You can say, well, it's 2021, that's, yo, them, them nations are going on how they want, we understand that. But look at this. Oh, I've just lost, oh no, it's there. It's there. Right, so he said his prayer service was the most LGBT inclusive. And when you mix prayer and you start mixing these things, then you mix, you, look at this. Biden was sworn in on a storied 19th century family Bible. And now when we're reading his 19th century family Bible, what does it say in this chapter? This is why we say, yo, Leviticus 20:19, if a man li also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. But he's not talking about repentance. He's not talking as come as you are, but change it. He's saying, come on, come in you and have a, bless have a blessing for being openly disobedient to the Lord. Here he is. Look, in 2013, Barack Obama's inaugural prayer service featured, featured the first ever openly LGBT plus clergy member to take part, Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson. And there you are, man. Another, another reason they're going off. All right, this is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. It says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's what it says there. So how, how do you get... From that scripture that he swore in on, remember, he swore in on his Bible that says that about 
his um, funny man community and this is this is what he was sworn in on and it says that the reverend that was running the thing for um, my man oh no sorry that was um that was Barack but he was the vice president so he was still co-signing that sorry I was wrong about that where's the scripture gone yeah yeah first Timothy 2 and 12 but I suffer not a woman to teach not to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence so how can the woman uh, not usurp authority or be silent when she's a dumb reverend and let's search up what um, reverend means does it not mean to revere that's a genuine question a reverend worthy of respect he who look at that he who is respected because when we're talking churchically or ecclesiastically look clergyman member of the clergy look up the word clergy office or dignity office learning knowledge erudition now the woman is not meant to teach the scriptures according to the scriptures so I would want to see her breakdown of 1 Timothy 2 and 12 beside the point because we know they're anti-scripture but position themselves as they speak as a dragon alright but it says so that's what Mr. Obama did and remember Biden was the vice president it said but the Biden-Harris administration went far further with the live stream service featuring five LGBT plus faith leaders a performance from a gay icon and including LGBT plus people in the main sermon and that's funny when you go into the word icon because this is the image of the beast let's go into the word image of the beast um, what can we get bible hub so let's get revelation 13 I actually should have just searched that in it Right, so here you have it, Revelation 13, and I want the interlinear, please. Um, the image of the beast, that's 14, isn't it? To make an image, you see that icona, icon. Now if we search up the word, remember it said there was a gay or homosexual stick bundle. trying it's wrong, I'm trying right when you look up the word icon so it's a gay icon it says look icon is from that Greek image figure picture statue idol hmm? an image in the mind really so the word was icona yeah and that's talking about the icon the image of the beast and this is part of the image part of the system the beliefs the worship the reverence this is how they get down this is how they pray with an LGBT inclusive when the scriptures condemn that and there's actually it's actually a sin unto death the wages of sin are death, even in the so-called New Testament. It tells you you can't be an uh, abuser of mankind, themselves with mankind, but just for the sake of trying to get it quicker. Right, it says, I, um, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6. When you have 1 Corinthians 6, when you start at 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, or kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Shai, should I say? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters. So again, the reverence of man over the Most High is still idolatry. So the, the gay icon, having that above as a preeminent figure on a scriptural prayer inauguration, and of course it's their prayer, so we know that they're going to go off. But the principle there is putting that, that image, that icon, above the Lord. Because the Lord said, what? If you do that, you get put to death in, that, in our land. Not adulterers, not effeminate, not abusers of themselves with mankind. Now if we go back to um, Bible Hub... First Corona. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Now we're going to go in the interlinear. And what's this word? Look at that man. I don't know what translation this is. But it literally says, um, Be not deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals. And you check into this. It says, uh, what does that say? Ase no koitai. Ase no koitai. That means a homosexual. They won't inherit the kingdom, but my man's praying. Not praying for repentance, but praying for their blessings. And, you know, people, people in Israel may, may struggle with that. This, this is not a thing where, um, that's a sin unto death, man. It's not a light thing. All right, it's not just, 
our opinion that we don't personally like it is is this is the decrees of the lord so if it doesn't show you that this man is off right the whole interfaith service that's off man what does amos 3 say interfaith amos 3 and 3 it says can two walk together except they be agreed how much more can they pray together first corinthians 1 and 10 says um now i beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Certain Israel, well, you know, you can't really get down like that. Look, man, <laughs> uplifting of oppressed minorities, yeah, right, man. Uplifting them into your, um, let's get the word uplifting. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uplift, well that's obvious, up to lift. Lift means to elevate in rank or dignity. So you're going to exalt them that they may fall. Exalt them into your your uh, falsehood that they may believe it. Now that's all the um, secular articles. And this is what I wanted to say. I wanted to say he's an actor, man. He's a hypocrite. And when you go into this, it says uh, the G5273, uh, Hippocrates, Hippocrates, one who answers an actor, a hypocrite. Now, when you have it in ancient Greece, if I'm not mistaken, of course, check it as I would say, but the actors, they would use the Greek word uh, effectively hypocrite. It says, look, literally a stage player, a hypocrite, a dissembler, a pretender. And that's what he is. How can you have an interfaith, can two work together? How can you have a woman reverend when you're a vice president? And how can you have a dumb, whatever you're going on with, man, when Leviticus 20... We just hit that even in the so-called New Testament. But that's the Old Testament. We hit that in the New Testament. So-called. Because there's no um, literal thing where it says, well, this is the New Testament. That's just what man has put onto it. Meaning New Covenant. The diath diatheke, diatheke, or diatheke in the Greek. Meaning a covenant, a testament. And when you go into Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8. Jeremiah 31 starting at 31. Hebrews 8 starting at 8 through 10. It'll tell you who the New Covenant was for. Israel and Judah. Even the two witnesses. All right? So you've got um, Crown, Dutch curfew riots rage for the third night. For third night, people are pissed off, man. Okay. Second Ezra's fifteen. Um, we'll start at one. Behold, thou speak thou. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So everything that's written in this book is faithful and true. Now, Mr. Joe Biden. If you hear this, is that, is that faithful and true? What are you doing? Is that faithful and true, the judgment on the homosexual? Is that faithful and true, the um, order and decree that a, a man is to teach in terms of a churchical order? But that again, there's order, and this is what this, this place promotes, the lack and absolute degradation of any sense of biblical order. Now, they've got order. <laughs> the the so-called, well, the Israelite man on the bottom, then the Israelite woman, Probably then the Israelite child. I'll put that between the, the man and the woman. And then you've got the Elamite. Then you've got the all the way up to Edomite. They're trying to employ an Edomite supremacy. So there is an order, but it's not a biblical order by any means. The Lord set it up. You can say it like that. He put it on their spirit to be wicked, but it's not according to the scriptures in terms of their order. Do you understand? It's according to prophecy. It's according to decree. But it's not the biblical order as they position it. This is what's righteous. No, it's not. All right, Second Ezra 15 and 3, Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So when you're getting all manner of, and they're publishing, what's that, the Patriot, the Patriot Act 2, publishing all manner of things to come against you. <laughs> and they say, talking terrorists, this terrorist, that, the war on terrorism. Now they're talking about a theological terrorism, or a, um, especially with the domestic terrorism with what happened with the capitol building and it's all going to culminate mark we words again it's all going to culminate in the persecution of you jacob it don't matter if you're in gms if you're in hodc if you're in sakari if you're in iuic isupk it doesn't matter at that point at that point they will be unified in coming against me and they still are but even more so okay whatever if you're an israelite and we, we you had at the capitol listen man at the capitol building bullshit riot thing yeah you had a certain group of israel there now what the hell are you doing there does the scripture not say uh, um what does it say abstain from all appearances of evil 
So why are you going to march with and and come on man? That's why what did it say in Ephesians 5 man? Ephesians 5.15 It says See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And that is walking as a fool. Of course, the Lord set it up like that so they can say, well, look, Israel was there. Perfect, you've played your part, but you've still been a damn fool. <laughs> you're still set up to be a fool. Oh, man. All right. Second Ezra 16. Start at 3. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? The Lord. But it's not his will. Once he starts... Licking that, it's going to be as a, as a birth pains, birth pangs even, all right? And that goes for two-thirds of Israel and, and the, well, the nation of Babylon, the, United, the divided states of Babylon, the divided states of America, Mystery Babylon the Great, the whore, the, the damn whore. Second Ezra 6 and 5, plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? So plagues, you got this variant, you got that variant, you got this variant, you got, it's all, it's all doing the Lord's will, man. All right, we'll read eight. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? So that's pride. You're gonna get, you're gonna effing jab me up, and you think it's going go? If this, <laughs> if this is the Lord's will, you can't fight against it. That's the damn pride of Esau Edom, man. It says, "Behold, the plagues are sent." Second Ezra 15, no, Second Ezra 16 and 14. Behold, the plagues are sent, and they shall not return again until they come upon the earth. It says. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? And if you're of the elect, the answer is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. The beginning of sorrows, you can read about that in Matthew, um, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and I think it's Mark 13, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Alright, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear the beginning of evils what shall i do when these evils shall come and it's cleave unto the lord is the answer if you're of the elect you'll, it's already set up like that here we are second thessalonians 2 we'll start at 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day meaning the day of the lord the, the hastening of the day of the lord of yahweh for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first so israel had to go off and that man of sin be revealed aka Esau Edom the son of perdition look up that word perdition in the Greek in the English said whoso opposeth sorry who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God shewing himself that he is God now, I can't remember which brother actually put it up I've not seen it yet but the title <laughs> the new religion is government or government is the new religion something like that um, go look that up as well I can, I can guarantee if we're talking about the same um, if we're speaking on the same accord and we're looking at all these things that are around, it's got to be. It's got to be. The government is the new religion. What's that man that says? Look it up. All right. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. I know ye now what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And this is the time. That's why they're going to have to come and, come for, <laughs> come and kill Jacob. Huh? That's why Jacob will have trouble, but he will be saved out of it. The elect. And it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And it starts with the prophets. Let's get Revelation 11. I think it's 4. 4 or 5. Revelation 11 and start at 3. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God, Yahweh of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Going into he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword that he was blessed with, pursuant to Genesis 27 and 40, shall be killed with the sword. And that is, when we, we read that in context, talking about all nations. So we read that out of context, say all nations, but... The context of that is going into Rome. And then in the next verse after that, after verse 10, it talks about another beast. Another beast, two horns, as a lamb speaking as a dragon. That's the divided states of Babylon. All right. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. And we can apply that at the time. <laughs> when that time comes, and it will surely come, it will not tarry. 
The terrible one is going to go into Isaiah 14 when his pump is brought low. I think that's the 11th first roundabout. Yeah, it says, um, it's talking about Lucifer. It talks about the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon, the ruler of Babylon, the mystery Babylon. Because this never happened. This has never happened. You can never go into history where this happened and both Israel and Judah were in their, well, Israel and Judah were cleaving unto one another and took all the heathen who ruled over them into captivity. That's never happened. Uh, yeah, thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vows. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee, going into a, a state of destruction when worms cover you. Reminds me of, what's that, Job 19 and 27. Job 19 and 27. Oh, so maybe it's 26. Start 25. There we are. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. After, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Isaiah 47, Babylon, you, you're done, man. Isaiah 47 and 1, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit, uh, sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. The daughter, meaning it's, it's an offspring, it's a likeness of Babylon, but yet it's still Babylon. Babylon the great even. It says, Take the millstone and grind meal. Yeah, yeah, for, that, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate, because it's sat as a woman, but she's a whore. All right. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks and make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Being made bare, Esau being made bare. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Because if Yahawashai came back as a man, they'd crucify him just like they did. So he has to come back with great power. Great power and glory, even chariots. And we were talking about Esau. Esau is bare, man. Esau is absolutely through. And he, he knows it. What's that? Like, he knows it. Oh, oh, he knows it. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> what did he say? Um, bear with me in my folly. Jeremiah 49 and 10, it says, But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. <laughs> he is not. Right, name three. So, woe, woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. And the bloody city, America, Babylon the Great, is a bloody city. That great city, the whore. Numbers 35 and 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. That's why nuclear missiles must rain down. And it's not going to be us. It's not going to be damn niggers and spicks shooting rockets upon you. <laughs> but the prophecy must first come through the elect of the nation of Israel. Or even the nation of Israel. Verse 2 it says, The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of wheels, of the wheels, and of the praising of the horses and of the jumping chariots. And horses, wheels, they're all synonymous with chariots. I'm going to skip down. In fact, we'll start, yeah, 4, skip down to 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well favoured harlot. And who's the well favoured harlot? Who's known as a, that whore? Let's get a revelation. How long are we on? What? 20? I've only just started, man. 20 minutes. Mm. I'll try to wrap this up, Salakia. Right, Revelation 17, and it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And that reminds me of Habakkuk, not Hanukkah. Uh, Habakkuk, is that three and f two, two and five? We'll go with that. Yep, Habakkuk two and five. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And what did it say that all nations have drank of that wine? And it talks about the um, the making you neighbour to drink wine. I think that's the next verse. Is that three and three and five maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I won't keep you waiting. 
And it talks about the pride in it. So we got Obadiah, I don't know why I put one, Obadiah 3. Meaning because Obadiah is only one chapter, is why I said that. So Obadiah 3, verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. You caveman. In the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And we just hit that in Isaiah 14. It says, um, Isaiah 14 and 13. For thou said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Just as we read in um, well, Isaiah 47, just as we, as we read in Second Thessalonians, the one that's trying to make himself above everything that is called God. Right, so Nahum 3 and 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I would discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will shew the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. So it's going to be a shameful day. It says, Jeremiah 50 and 12, Your mother shall be so confounded, she that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. And that will be Babylon when, once it's burned by thermonuclear destruction and fire of the chariots. And the mother of Babylon will be who? Great Britain. Even now it's trying to distance itself, socially distance itself. All right, so there we are. That was, um, I don't know, the, uh, I don't know what I'm calling that. But I pray it was edifying. Double honours to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom to the sincere brothers, sisters, children, pushing and enduring. Fight these demons, man. Let's get, let's get on it. Because what do they say? We've got next. <laughs> Alright, so I pray that was edifying. Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai.